Well, I was born in Munich, in the capital of Bavaria. I had a bigger brother who was not always my delight because being four years older than me, he liked teasing me. Apart from that, I had a nanny and she used to take me for a walk to the nearest little park. And then I went to a kindergarten. And then at the age of six, I started school. So I was there from six to seven and seven to eight. And that's when they beat up my dad. Hitler had come to power by then, a few weeks before. And my parents took me out of this regular state primary school and put me into the Jewish school. From the moment that Hitler came to power and the incident with my dad occurred, I think I knew that I was in the category that wasn't just Bavarian, that I was, my identity was more obviously being Jewish and different from other Bavarians. Well, it was the 10th of March, 1933, which happened to be a day I was in bed with a little cold, nothing serious. And I heard the front door of our fourth floor flat banging shut, thinking it was my mum coming home from shopping and that she'd come and say hello to me, but nobody came in. I thought that was a bit odd, so I got up opened the door to the corridor, which was opposite the bathroom, outside which were pegs that my dad always hung his clothes on. And sure enough, there was my father's suit, but it was covered in blood, which for an eight-year-old was a shock, as you can imagine. So I tiptoed down the corridor, knocked at my parents' bedroom door, opened it and just saw my father pulling up his bedclothes so I shouldn't see his face. So I went back to bed and I lay there, I guess in sort of shock because I couldn't understand what was going on. After that, there was the doctor came and then we went to our little house in the village uh, called Walchensee where my dad recovered. <clears throat> But nobody ever told me anything. I think they tried to protect me. I think leaving Munich at midnight, for me at first, was a real adventure. I mean, it was midnight, it was my fellow cooks and my mum and my dad and my uncle with a camera. And then, of course, the time came and the train left and it was a steam train, so it moved out very, very, very slowly. But I still saw my mum step behind my dad and dab her eyes, so, but she tried, she hoped that I would not see her cry. And that was the first time that the separation hit me. You know, up to then, it was me getting on the train, great fun, you know, I was going to England, I knew where I was going. Uh, there were no uncertainties at that point. But when I saw my mum cry, I think it was then that the fact was that I was going to be on my own. And I was met by, I guess, what looked to me like an elderly, probably just a middle-aged lady, in a purple suit. Now, why that struck me, and I can see it now, and she greeted me by giving me her hand and said, how do you do? And I took her hand and I gave a little curtsy, which is what one, of, one did in my time, in my place. And I said, yes. So that was my first use of English in the UK. You know, they were very nice and very helpful, um, but it was, being thrown into the English pool at the deep end. What I really, really, really wanted, and we're now talking about first week of July, I wanted to go to school. And I was really, really keen to learn English quickly and well. And I said to myself in German, ich werde diese Sprache bemeistern. I shall master this language. And I think I 
I love English. So there was a magazine called Picture Post and this was one of the pictures and it wound up in our common room and I picked it up, turned the pages and came across my dad. I had not been in contact with my parents. I cried and Miss Borner, who was supervising prep, took us both to the headmistress's drawing room and said to her, oh, she says that this is her father. And the headmistress looked at it and then looked down at me over it and then looked again and then said, that is not your father, that is propaganda. I did not argue with her. That was the first time when I was all of 14 years old I realized that people could not understand what had gone on and what was going on in Germany.